阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Thank you for coming today. Uh, we'll continue our uh Tai Chang Gan Ying Pian for the part the treaties and response and retributions for part eight uh of section three the transgressions. So this part eight is just um very straightforward. You know, doing evil deeds, evil thoughts, uh blatantly without any reservations. So quite similar to what previous is. To be honest, this kind of、uh, category is just simply helping us to understand a little bit, to navigate around a bit. Otherwise, you know, have you know hundreds of you know, pairs of clauses it might you know, be very hard to, to 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 make sense of it, right? If you just memorize it bl-、uh, blindly, like 108 of them,、uh, pairs of clauses. So what we have here is,、um, you know. Verse thirty-eight: To bankrupt another in order to seize their wealth, to as a judge or official unreasonably freeze or confiscate assets. Um, this one can start from you know you can you can understand the first half the you know, 破人之家 To be honest, it's not just bankrupt; it's also destroy people's uh home. Or doing anything that will ha-、uh, make them unable to live in their natural habitat, so that extends to our、uh, natural disasters, you know, those climate change, and those、um, uh, disasters. You know, like、um, dam, like you create a dam, right? And if the dam is you know created in a way that is very careless, obviously. When you do that, when you create them, you inevitably will destroy a lot、um, of the habitats, right? So you can't not destroy other people's living home, but you need to minimize it. So this is also one of the way, you know, one one of the、uh, examples of、uh, destroying people's home, all right? Or like us, bush fire, basically, you know, careless, you know, smoking in the jungle. Where it's very、um, maybe during summer months, it gets very、um, flammable. Everything's dry.、Uh, it's not been raining for three months, three weeks, or I mean, has not been raining for months. And then you know we carelessly or purposefully put things on fire and causing either buildings on fire or the jungles or forest, forestry on fire. Hence, burning, killing all the animals inside, or at the very least. Destroying their habitats, basically destroying their homes. So this clause applies to all that as well. Obviously, in this one, is socially speaking, you might cause someone else to bankrupt. You know, maybe you、um, cheat, deceived them. You know, in order to seize their wealth. 破人之家，呃，取其财宝。Yeah, you destroy their house. Uh, by I mean, in 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 a metaphoric way. By、uh, you know causing them to、uh, lose their sense of、uh, uh, income, you know, lost their source of income、uh, through you know cheating,、uh, you know, like fooling them into a business partnership and take all the money away、uh, when they are not aware. So one of the very like uh, cases uh, that might happen.、Um, and remember, like if you you know like in terms of Bushfire, you know, burning a whole forest.、Um, the karma is quite serious because you have to think about all the sentient beings living in this place. It's, it's basically like going to a in the middle of New York City and burn the whole town, a whole apartment. It's terrible. It's horrible. It's condemnable. Same goes for the forest. We do the same for the forest. You know, you're literally doing the same thing. Like that, like you know, burning a very populous area. So that karma of killing, yes, you understand. You know, is you you will be killed in future. 
It's like going for a war. Even the life is insects, is you know animals. They're not humans, but they're still alive. And there are thousands of lives in there. You know, many people build their nests. Many animals build their nests. Birds, you know, um, ants, the insects, the um, uh, the um, you know mammals, you know, and and all of them got burned because of carelessness or because of intentional arson, uh, intentional you know ends like arsoning. So you know, some people might want to clear a certain area. And you know, they're if they are not skillful enough, you know, in the jungle, if they're not skillful enough, there's something called coal burning, which I am not qualified to talk uh, in depth about. But it somehow is a co- it's a control burning where you can uh, apply this you know fire in a control manner where you can uh, burn out all the weeds that are fire not fire resistant, uh, so that it will reduce the risk of burning. But this is a you know skilled. And you need to do it in the right time, right way. However, um, what this applies to, what this clause applies to, is the situation where people are actually doing it for their benefit, profits. Like this one can be interpreted as, you know, breaking people's house to take their wealth. In terms of jungle, jungle is wealth, right? You can have lumbers. You can use that land to build new, the estate, real estate stuff like that. So someone, you know, might want to make use of the land, make use of the resource, and they're too lazy to do it properly, and they just use fire and burn everything. Um, that is terrible. And what kind of benefit could they get, right? Like, uh, out of these destructions, it's nothing compared to the price they have to pay. And just like, you know, what Buddha said, you know, in, in karma, laws of karma, um, all debts must be paid, you know. What goes around comes around. You owe debt of life, debt of, you know, you owe, um, people, as I say, you take other people's life, unsanctioned taking people's life, you will have to return your, uh, you have to let you, you have to return it. Basically, you need to be, you, you to kill, you need to be ready to be killed. Basically, and you know, you you taken people's life uh, prematurely. Same thing will happen to you, right? You get murdered, or whatever circumstances happen to you, you know, it will prematurely end your own lifespan as well. Same goes for money. Same goes for wealth. You know, you owe people stuff. You need to return it. You know, and there are many ways to return it. Very creative ways. You know, not just simply writing off debts, you know, paying the uh, in terms of cash in our financial sense, but, you know, you might reborn as animal, mew in their farm, work for them until you die. Uh, if you, like, you know, there are complexities, you know, layers upon layers, not just purely owing them money or owing them the service uh, that you, um, maybe your treatment towards them is cruel. But they will treat you the same thing. While you're working for them, they will treat you with cruelty that's why some people when they work they still got treated very well and dignified and treated like a family because they do the same thing for the other person in the past some people got treated where badly you know in a smaller scale it's like you know the attitude is not good towards you, you know, it's just two person working for the same company why is this person getting better treatment the other not so yeah but in this context, it's more like you're actually returning the favor. Like you actually, you know, need to pay back. Like what you owe. Uh, it's diff- quite different from like working for a company. That one is more like how do you extract your fubao, your wealth. In this case, you literally like become a mule, become a servant, you know, indentured servitude. You're not paid. People like call slavery and all that. Um, it would take a different turn, right? Some like. The, the, maybe this modern law does not allow slavery. It would re- convert into, say, you marry into a family where you work like a slave, in a way. You treat it badly. And you still have to do your housework, you to take care of them, even though the attitude towards you is bad. 
So that's another form of repaying it. And uh, you couldn't help it but doing it. That's the law of karma. So we need, always need to think about this uh, teachings. In Tai San Ganying, to be honest, we should be sharing a lot more stories, which uh, I can extract that, but I'll focus more on this, you know, understandings and all the theories and abstract. Um, because story-wise, you will be able to see life around you, you know, your friends, your colleagues and stuff, how they, or your people around your life, you know, the, how someone, you know, they um, do not know why, but they just got themselves into that situation, you know, where they are, um, families not really uh, peaceful. They always, you know, get to a different kind of troubles. They always have, you know, maybe the husband and wife is not going well. The children are not uh, behaving and, you know, they do something that will always cause you troubles. You always have to end up wasting money, using money to resolve it. Uh, you know, to compensate whatever the troubles your spouse or your children have done or your parents as well. So those things happen in real life, right? The most obvious one, gambling, 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 leave a lot of debt to the children and, and the wife. None of this has happened by a chance. You literally owe them the money in the past. That's why you have to go through this pain. You owe this Maybe this man you call father or this woman you call mother, something like that, you know, money in the past. So they gamble all the money. They only need to pay 20%, but 80% you have to pay because they just pass away and move on. Or they just ran, ran out, ran away and unable to be found by the uh, loan shark. Now you have to work your your um, yourself off. Like you have to work yourself so much, so hard to repay that debt. So that's another case of repaying them. So I'm not saying that it's not um, sympathizable, we shouldn't be helping, uh, we shouldn't be, you know, trying to make it better. This is not what this is about. This is observing things as is. You know, the society has so much things going on, good, bad. That's, you know, how we understand good and bad, you know, good ending, bad ending, good phenomena, bad phenomena, because, you know, this thing is hurting um, or these things benefiting. Why? Because of the past. So once we understand all these stories, you know, and uh, modern story, ancient stories, you know, same things. The story is still about, you know, what is human life, you know, about. Um, some people born into wealth, born into power. Some people born into poverty, born into this. Uh, terrible situation or some people are very fortunate to have good family and they are mentally they are physically and everything is top-notch they always are able to do stuff well and some of them might even be very kind and very humble even though they have all this you know they're winning the life you know, they, they're living a, a winning life a top-notch life however they are still humble they're still you know able to retain their humility. That's because they cultivate very well, right? Some people are wealthy, very powerful, or maybe born into that kind of family, but they also arrogant. They get more, uh, you know, uh, mostly are more easily arrogant and lacking self-control, always dabble with drugs, scandal, stuff like that. That's another sort. They've done the fortune part, good fortune, but they didn't do much on the cultivation of virtues. So it's two different, it's quite di two different things. Like it's indirect, to have for good fortune, you need to cultivate good you know, merits, which means good deeds. But if you just do it, you know, passively, rather than understanding why and really feel it in your heart that you really want to do it good, then even you got the good fortune, the fruits of your labor, it will not be complete, right? So let's not go too complex on that. If, if we go back to the more summation, more summary part, human life is about four things. Uh, and Buddha has summarized it very well. Uh, if we think about it, right? T take it easy and let it sink in. First one is, you know, 人生仇业, yeah. 
So he summary summarized with one one word. Sorry, not four things. One word. Why are why do we born into this world? Why are we born into this world? Why do we exist in this world? You know, to repay our karmic debt or to to repay or re, to to get or to pay from what you have done in the in the past. Right? Or this whole, uh, it's reading the like uh, reading the dictionary. This is like so bad. Yep. So we just we, we just we are here as a result of a karma. It's it's a it's a phenomenon. You know, our existence is a result of karma. What is karma? Cause, condition, effect. In Yuan Guo, cause, condition, effect. So. You form as a human born into this kind of situation is the result of your past and also the condition parents come together. And of course, the part, the cause is the five precepts, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the uh, summary of how human came to be human. So in the past, if you, you know, good deeds, you always get good karma. If you go bad deeds, you get bad karma. Um, it's easy if you just look at it like that. But, you know, it's not straightforward, though. It's not, that's not it. You know, you don't exhaust it. However, because we always create a new karma when we receiving it. While we receive, we also create so while we receive this karma, we might be angry. You know, bad karma is a part, result of our past bad action. We doing, uh, repeating that sort of thoughts in a very, you know, fine way is thoughts. And then you move up to speech and action. Um, those things are recreating the same uh, chain of uh, effects that binds you to this endless train so it's supposed supposedly you're able to stop doing the karma you know doing this you know greed hatred uh, doing things out of greed hatred ignorance doing you know being angry or being greedy being uh, many kinds of greedy many kinds of angry you know annoyance greedy is like you know holding last oh last lasting over someone and uh holding the money holding the power uh you know and then from there you move on and do something terrible, you know, misconduct, sexual misconduct, or killing, murdering, or you know, plotting, scheming, uh, you know, cheating, uh, lying, uh, deceive, all sorts of te techniques in order to achieve that to satisfy your cravings. Um, same goes for anger, right? Like you know, you commit murder because of you know, crime or passion at the moment you just can't help it so those things are comics uh, effects cause and effects um, it's just to describe this thing you know how, how this works so normally we are all have a degree of ignorance about it that means you're not fully in control of your comic output so everything you put into this life uh, is unless you're fully aware and enlightened or you're working on it, well, we are working on it, but like really, really working on it, unless you're really putting a real serious effort on it, you're still following whatever the path is. You know, when you receive this scam, that means you owe people money in the past. Doesn't matter what kind of scam it is, from who, from your family as well, or from your, from some a random stranger, from a colleague, from your business partners, you know, got cheated out of the funds and stuff like that. We are angry. We will. Like Venerable Woolings talk about vengeance, anger, right? Rage. In the last last week, and last week we talk about, um, you know, anger, revenge, you know, forgiveness. Yeah. Why we learn all this, right? Why do we have to do, you know, restrain ourselves so much? It's because we understand. If we truly understand that, if if we can put a pause to this. Karma, you know, this wheel, now contributing to the wheel spinning, 
that we're no longer bound by this. Remember, the the karmic effect is in place because we keep adding to it. We keep adding the cause, and then the cause is a few to whatever happens in future, sprout into future. And, and if we stop creating the cause, we're no longer uh, adding to it. So what remains will be exhausted as you go through it with a peaceful, calm mindset. Um, and you purify yourself, basically. You're no longer bound by these effects. Because those cause, condition, effect, by itself, it's not able to do anything. It will, um, if you isolate them, it will not be able to do anything. But if you keep acting in accordance to this script, you know, you will always having to play a show and that show will keep going and on and on and on unless you re realize I don't have to do that. I'm just going to stop. That is not so easy, huh? so to speak. Uh, spur of a moment, everyone heard of it, you know, that empowers and everything just come out and and mess up with whatever you thought you want to do or not want to do. And sometimes you can't even help yourself. You just keep doing the same thing, same pattern. So you, that's where cultivation comes in. This kind of understanding comes in. Read more stories, understand more real life stories, uh, cautionary tales. Also, explore life, understanding, you know, what life really is, uh, what kind of feats, speech, thoughts people are having or you having when you encounter different situation. Um, just to get a understanding or get a feel of you know this karmic if you're more aware more acute sensitive you will be able to detect um you're creating it as you go you're creating your own future as you go so that's where the word changing destiny came from you're actually rewriting your script because you committing to a different output you are not following the scripts anymore you change a bit instead of being angry at someone rude to you you say sorry instead of being uh you know defensive and bounce back you say are you okay instead of you know trying to you know be defensive being you know, all your tones come out with your words sharp remarks you say are you okay mate can i help you you know when they're being rude to you or something so that changed the scripts that changed the scripts you're supposed to have conflict with this person maybe uh, in certain times certain place now it becomes your friends it's supposed to encounter uh, death at a certain point in life because you change your pathways, you extended your lifespan. Like the story of a monk, young uh, Sravamana you know, Sami, a uh, young monk, a novice monk who is very, uh, like eight years old. This, uh, there was this Arahan, the um, attained, enlightened uh, monk who has a novice monk at the age of eight, very young. He had can this um, master could see the past life and he could see that his time is up in one year or two years, um, in a few months actually. He say that, you know, you should go home and see your parents. He didn't tell the kid, you know, he didn't tell his student, this novice monk, what happened. Because he's going to pass away in a few months, he should go home and see his parents. Because as a young, it's still a kid, essentially, right? Parents still need to see their parents. And he went back uh, to his village where he was born, you know, where his parents was living. And on the way, he went past a river and he saw there's a lot of ants trying to survive by clinging into the river banks. Uh, however, because of the current of the river, they were sweeping, they, were, they got swept away. So this um, novice monk field, you know, pity upon this uh, helpless insects. So he picked up a leaf and scooped them up and put them on the roadside so that they can survive. So this little deed of kindness, right? And he did that. He moved on with his life, go home to his family. And after three months, he went back to his master. And master was shocked to see like, why are you in a way, like, why is you here not fulfilling your karma? And then he went into deep meditation and see his past. He sees what did he do in between. 
and he saw that he was actually, you know, saving the lives of insects, which is small and minuscule in by our standards, right? Uh, but he saved it out of a pure kindness and it's animal, right? You, what, what do you get out of an ant? You just do it because you want to help them. So because of that, his life extended, you know, just like that. You know, he rewrite his, his own script because he follows his conscience, his you know, better side of him. So for us as well, like every single time when we might have, you know, a turning point where we decide we want this or not want this, do this or not do this, uh, yes or no, or you know, there's a crossroad um, appear before you. Sometimes they don't, they are not obvious. Sometimes it's just that's it. If you commit to do it, you do it, and then it's already there. So it's very quick, split the second decision. Um, what we need to do is we need to always prepare that kind of mindset. You know, no matter what happens, I always need to be more careful, more caring, more considerate. Um, always want the best for others. Always wish the best for others, no matter who they are. They can be rivals in your work and stuff like that. They can be someone rude to you. They can be want this, this, and that, that. But you always wish the best for them. You're always in your power, able to provide, uh, you know, the best outcome for them. That is in Chinese called Guang Jie San Yuan. You know, cultivate a good uh, relationship with all sentient beings, not humans only. That's very narrow. Animals, right? And good thoughts also cultivates good relationship with the ghost because they can see your thoughts. All right? It's unfortunate that I have so much random rubbish in it. That's why we need to clean it out. So this, back to the um, clause here, bankrupt another in order to seize their wealth. To reason, unreasonably freeze and confiscate a set is basically you know, greed after other people's fruit. And if they can... If you can do that, I mean, if you able to be, you know, bankrupted by other people, you know, through many means, you know, sk scheming, cheating, or you know, betrayals, that means you owe them, right? And and able to weather this and not using hatred, might not be understanding, might be angry, but um, understand if you're the receiving end of this, uh, understand the cause and effect, able to reach the point of acceptance and start again right not getting caught up in it is very important all right the people who commit this obviously is bad right we are not saying that they will be escaping the law right it's illegal and by human standard and um if they won't you know if they escape the legal pursuit they will always get punished by karma in, in the end every time people you know do this they might take what was owed to theirs right, in the past life or something but we could not um, very be very confident saying that when they take they will not take just enough they won't let you owe me ten dollars I'm gonna take exactly ten dollars they're gonna take one thousand right with interest and stuff they will still take too much and then it becomes a situation of they owe you because they take too much so never engage in this action because this thing is not going to be. This is endless game. And I, for an eye, makes the whole world blind. Um, this thing will not end. The more you push back, the more they will bounce back. And this is an endless bouncing game. And, and it get worse and worse as your life goes on. This life, next life. Might be small bickering into, uh, you know, court battle into you know, assassinating one another or into the future, having wars from two clans. This thing happens if you, un if you have access to that information. Back to the point. Um, so, yeah, this one. Flood and commit arson, endanger people's life and property. Pretty straightforward. I think um, um, you know people who do that will definitely get the punishments. Um, 
be 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 careful though. Like, don't read this as in oh, this is serious stuff. We don't do that. You know. But there are cases where you, you can tune it down to the day to day scenario. You know, not like big serious money. You, you won't, of course, it will cause flood and commit arson. Most of us, and it's a very special special minority. But we need to be careful of not, um, you know, doing something that endanger people's life and property, like driving, basically driving, simple, everyday stuff, driving. And what what do we do when we're driving? If we speed, if we not uh, thinking properly, if we just rush for the sake of rush, or feeling the you know fast and furious, you know, enjoying that. That, that fury, enjoying that that speed, um, without thinking about you know what happens if you actually cause a collision with other cars and harming them, you know that kind of consequence, you know, is not just financially, not just legally, it's also you know psychologically scarring. It's bad. You know, people who crash, they lose their family forever. They lose their life. You who crash into people because of your reckless driving, you have to deal with that kind of scenes for the rest of your life. And all because you want to have, in your case, 10 miles per hour or you know, 10 more kilometers per hour on top of wherever you are. So all this is just telling us no matter where you are, who you are, what position you're in, you just need to be real with your thoughts and look at yourself and say, I'm here, I'm here, I have this mindset, you know, I have this, uh, sometimes I might be a bit prone to anger, sometimes I'm this, also what's my strength, I'm easy, you know, I'm able to be more flexible, I'm able to understand people's point of view easier. Um, and this helps me to understand better stuff like that. Or you know, I'm not, I I I don't lie too much. I don't or I don't lie to people. I just being honest. And those things helps you to assess where you are and your cultivation goals. Um, and from there, you need to continue growing your strength, your merits. Continue to work on your weakness. See where you can improve a bit in your life. Um, and you can't just you know, talk about cultivation. You need to read, like Alfan, he put notes on his deeds, good and bad. His wife do the same. They, she can't write, but she she put a circle in it. Red circle, black cross, you know, do a good deeds, red circle, bad deeds, uh, black dots, something like that. So, need to make it real. And, and other than that, you know, that's it. You can't have any change in your life if you don't put in the real work in it. There's no shortcut. There is no shortcut. You know, whatever you do, whatever you pursue, there's no shortcut. You could, you have to, you have to look into the reference. Like in this case, we look in the reference of different people's life. You know, ancient history record what what you know this uh, Mister is doing in this town, and. Uh, and also, in modern news, you see what people did and what's the consequences. Those are reference for you. For us, we just need to, you know, accumulate enough this kind of understanding at the same time while while we're going on with our lives, and let it be your version. You know, don't let let, let it sink in, right? And the more we listen, the better you are at dealing with our habits. Uh, no one wish to have poverty. Everyone wants their fortune. No one wish to have disasters. Everyone wants to have peace, harmony. Everyone wants to have, uh, you know, everything going smooth for them. All right. However, in real life, we might lacking in that area, lacking in fortune, lacking in uh, smooth sailing life. Everything is arduous. Everything is a like mountain. Why? You need to think about it. Uh, this is not about religion. This is not about uh, species as well, animal as well. You know, some dogs they're better than 
they living in a condition some better than some part of human population. All right, look at these pets. They got grooming. They got salon. They got you know manicure. Living even better than me, to be honest. All right, and they don't even have to work. They don't have to pay tax. They don't have to worry about anything other than wagging the tails and you know saying hi to their owners. So look at that that level of fortune. Obviously, you become a dog. That makes you think, why is he a dog, right? And and that's, you know, doesn't matter. Right? Some dogs end up becoming a dish, food. Some dogs is working, like canine or one of those gut dogs. Different relationship, different dynamics, different karma. You know, came, different karma give rise to different kind of relationship dynamics because karma means action the, the, the deeds that you did uh, the thoughts that you give so all this can be done can be asked by all sentient beings all right it's not just humans and um, if you know we want this we want fortune we want good fortune we want uh, peace of mind you know, don't have to worry about people breaking into your house uh, committing arson to your places or to places where you live, then start from, you know, always have the thought of helping people. You know, always retain that thought. Start doing the opposite, basically. Opposite of all this transgression. You know, small stuff, small good deeds. Don't have to be dramatic. Just have the thoughts. If you're working with friends and colleagues, you always have the thoughts. Everything they need, I hope they have it. That's it. And then if you happen to be in a position to help them and it's the right thing to do, then you do it. You know, you don't over calculating and all the stuff. Just be honest, be pure, be be, be serious about your role and, and and really care about them and really do your job well. You know, whatever role you is, father, son, mother, daughter, wife, husband, partner, Right, students, teachers, boss, subordinates, staff. Yeah, whatever you do, do not go for shortcuts. Be careful. Do not, as in, do not try to cut corners. Do not try to do things that is harming to your conscience. Always do it head with your head held high. Things that can make your head held high without fear of retributions but you don't do do no wrong for others right no matter how little benefit you get right to be honest that kind of mindset of trying to get benefit out of others and stuff is it's it's it's, it's not wise it's, that means people don't understand enough how benefit is how benefit actually works right if you truly truly want to benefit people obviously everyone wants to benefit you and that's 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 a very natural thing um you can't have it easy if the rest of the organization, rest of your group is suffering. Master Jing Kong went further to monks and say, when you saw the monk who not holding the precepts seriously, can we criticize them? No. No matter how bad that conduct is, how unwholesome the deed is, they will have karma to deal with. You do not have to act like the enforcer police. It's not up to us. That's not our job. And we should not even waste our energy on this. What we need to do is we need to understand if we go to the root of criticizing because he literally did a bad thing, maybe drink wine, um, uh, commit, you know, pre breaking precepts, you know, shouldn't be doing this, but to do this uh, deeds, then then what's the karma? Um, you know, people might, people not seeing you as an individual. You have to be understanding, right? No matter whatever beliefs and ideas we held, you know, people were usually grouped together when they were judged. And if we spread the bad, you know, image of other monks and stuff like that, or of anyone in the particular group, they might be collectively looked at with disdain. So basically, you're smearing on the Buddha's image because they are using the main image of a monk. So we should not 
this is a harmful deeds to the how to say the benefits you get from you know warning people about this person is minuscule compared to the harm you did to the general Buddhist propagation, which will help people getting out of their own suffering. So that is where you create a negative karma for yourself. Because what you did is reckless and you're actually creating negative karma to yourself. Right? So just because that person is doing mistakes, you know, under the pretense of, say, our Buddhist um, monk, uh, doesn't mean that they are uh, doesn't mean we are okay to just criticize it, put it on the YouTube and say say out loud, right? People who don't know, they don't know, right? We can educate as much as we can. They might take it, they might not take it. But for us, who Buddhists, we cannot do that because karma is very strong, uh, and there will always be retribution for your for their deeds. So all we need to do is just to make sure that the positive is come, uh, the the positive side of the organization or, or the people is being promote it and we, we we do not directly point out but we say a cautionary tale like this is what happened when they commit this precepts breaking you know they break this so what is going to happen right and some sometimes people knows they are breaking the rules breaking the laws they just you know can't help themselves so maybe be more how to say in a more conductive way like trying to say how do we actually correct this so first tell how serious it is and then tell how do we correct this behavior same 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 kind of effect they're trying to achieve with they first tell you how serious how bad it is and the real karma and you know people will understand this law of karma they will understand those are serious stuff and they will understand you know how painful it is to receive this karma and so they will start to repent and trying to change their ways so that they can no longer be bound by this suffering long term, right? Short term pleasure, long term suffering. That's basically what it is. Mm. So what we want to try to do as Buddhists in the context of Sangha and Buddhist communities, we always want to make sure that the image is positive in the people's mind, right? So one individual mistakes cannot uh, smear the whole thing, rotten apples. Let them receive their karmic retribution, their own karmic retribution. No one is exerting it other than their own self. All right. Always remember, well, not just one person, not just that what he did, what she did. Remember what he or she did compared to what he or she represents and how long, how far the influence of, of, of this organization is. And if it has a positive effect on the people, we always must try to protect uh, you know, the general organization so that they can continue to do good deeds, continue to help trust in front of people. We, can, we cannot point out the name, we can just say the negative deeds that might be done by that person is incurring negative karma, negative consequences, you know, using the, whatever the word people can accept, negative consequences, right? And yeah, we'll leave it at here. So let's finish up with uh, 10 times Amito 4. I will dedicate the merits and that's it. Thank you. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teachings for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. Susan Fuhawa. Amin. To for a me 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 to
陀佛，阿弥陀佛。